DJ Pro AI Playlist Tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and in this video, we're going in detail, and I'm going to teach you everything I know about DJ Pro's amazing playlist features. As DJs, the most important things, thing for us is to be organized. If we are organized, it'll make our DJ sets and our DJ performances so much smoother and so much better. So the trick is that behind every great DJ performance was hours and hours of preparation by making playlists, making cue points, and organizing all of the music that was going to be used in the set. So as DJs, we want to have our playlist organized and easy to understand so that when we look for a song, we could find it like that. If we want to change genres, if we want to change the vibe of the music, we could easily find the music that we're looking for. As DJs, we never want to be searching, looking, typing on our iPad, typing on our laptop, trying to find the song and looking like we're sending an email. We want to be DJing, focusing on the crowd, focusing on everybody having a great time. So DJ Pro, I believe has one of the most intuitive and most advanced playlists, uh, playlist features and playlist layouts and softwares. So in this video, I'm going to go in detail uh, and teach you guys everything I know about DJ Pro's playlist. And I'm going to show you some things that I personally do that help me stay organized. All right. So to start this off, when you first go into the app of DJ Pro, you are going to see a screen similar to this. You might see two records, and then you're going to see a blinking music symbol up here and up here if you have nothing loaded. So that is how we access the playlist. So we click over here, and we have these sources. These are the sources that we could use currently to DJ with DJ Pro AI. So the top part is my collection. Those are your personal playlists that you created. That is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, below it is featured. That means the music that DJ Pro gives you to practice with if you don't have any of your own music. And then music is your music on your actual device. It's not Apple Music streaming service. It's just the music on your device. And then Tidal is the streaming service that I use. And you could also use SoundCloud, Beatport, and BeatSource. And you can do videos and add music from your files. But when you click on Tidal, it's going to show you playlists down here. These are your playlists in the Tidal app. So the same app that you have on your phone for Tidal, you're going to see those playlists here. But you cannot edit them in the, inside the app. Because these are titles playlists, it's not the playlist that you create. Those are up here in my collections. So that was something that was a little confusing, but it's pretty simple. They don't call it my playlist, they call it my collections. So when you click on my collections, we get to this screen. And then these are our playlists. This represents this symbol here represents just a playlist and then this folder symbol represents a playlist folder so to create a new playlist you would press this button over here this plus button and then you have three options you could create a playlist you could create a smart playlist and you can create a playlist folder so i'm just going to go through them in order and explain to you what they do a playlist is simple if we add the playlist, we're going to name it X Ample. And it is a one page playlist of whatever you want it to be. So for this example, I'm calling it example. And now when you create a new playlist, it is going to add it to the bottom of your list. But if you tap on it and move it up, you have the ability to put these playlists wherever you want. So it's one more step to help you stay organized so you don't have to scroll through all of these playlists to find the one that you wanna use. Because when you, anytime you do a gig, if you're doing like a, a 
bar mitzvah or something or a gig, you should make a custom playlist for that gig and then put it to the top of your list so that when you go to DJ, your playlist for that specific gig is right there. And then you can still revert to your other backup playlist or your playlist that are sorted by genre or something. But it's always good to be able to position your playlist, whether you want to do it in alphabetical order or however you want it to be set up. We have the ability to move the playlist before a couple of the updates. You weren't able to do that, and it's cool that we are. So here is our example playlist. There is no music. So we could click on the playlist and then add songs. So we could add songs from library. And then we have the option here. These are songs from the, from the that are on my device. You could add songs from your device. Or you could go over here to the streaming service that you use, which is Tidal. And now you could add songs, uh, like pretty much any song there is, you could search for it and find it on Tidal. So if we search 50 Cent, this is going to search the Tidal app and get us music from the actual Tidal's streaming service. So there's like hundreds, there's, I'm not exactly sure of the number, but millions and millions of songs. So we got In the Club by 50 Cent, and then we're going to add it. If you look over here where it says Done, how there's two songs, that means when we press Done, those two songs are going to be in our playlist. So now if you look over here at the left, this one has the symbol for title. And then this one has the symbol for Spotify. But it's not going to be playing from Spotify. It's going to be playing from title. So we got our two songs there. If we want to add more songs, what we could do now is, is we could go back to title. And now let's say that you use Spotify or you use Tidal's app to make your own playlist when you're just using the app. You could either transfer from a different streaming service like Spotify and then transfer the playlist in the Tidal and then you will see it here. So you could take, let's say this Glitch Hop playlist, you could take the playlist from here, it's eight songs, and then you click on the eight songs and then we could add to playlist and then click on the playlist that you want. And then this whole playlist has been added to our playlist over here. So this is a very good way to dis discover new music. You could go on to Tyler, you could go on to Spotify and then search, let's say, um, popular dance music. And then you could listen to that playlist. And if you like most of the songs on the playlist, you could save it. And then you could put the whole, and then you could do what we just did and put the whole thing into your custom playlist. And then when we're in our custom playlist, let's say we wanted to delete some of the songs, you just slide it, slide it to the left and hit delete. So if you plan on keeping most of the songs from a playlist, you could just, you could just add it from your title playlist into your custom playlist and then delete some songs and then add songs from somewhere else. And now within Within these playlists, we get some information and we get some options on what we could do. First thing is up here, it says nine songs, 36 minutes. This is a very important piece of information because whenever you're doing a gig, you should plan on having at least double the music, maybe even more than double now that quick mixing is more popular. So if that party that you're playing out is five hours, then you're going to want to have a playlist that over here will say at least 10 hours, maybe even 12 hours if you plan on doing quick mixes. So it's very important when you make the playlist, how do you know when, when you have enough songs? It's a good idea. It's not an exact science, but you should have at least double than what you plan on playing for the gig. Also, if you plan on using auto mix with these playlists, think about how long the amount of time that you want different songs to be playing and then you could find that out here. Songs are typically about two and a half to three minutes. So this adds up all the minutes that are in the songs, and then it gives you the amount of time in hours, minutes, and even if it's a really big playlist, it'll tell you days. All right, so now if we go over here to the right, it is going to have a down arrow, and then right now it is, it is sorted by BPM. So it starts at 90 BPM, 
and then goes up to 130 in order going down so high bpm to low bpm if you plan on doing beat matching if you plan on doing mixes where you're staying close to the same bpm this is very helpful for you because now you know oh that next song is two is only two bpm higher or lower and it could work i could adjust it and play it now you could also you could also have the bpm going up so it'll start low bpm and then end in high bpm it's really a personal preference on what works for you. Next, you could do it by key. If you like doing harmonic mixing, if you're used to and you know the different keys and know how to mix that way, then this is very helpful because it gives you the key in order so you can mix the songs by key. And then next is time. This is based on how long the songs are. And then we can do by artist if you plan if you're let's say you're playing a 50 cent song and you want to find another 50 cent song and you like mixing that way by staying in the same artist then this is helpful so it's personal preference i just like to keep it on bpm and another thing you could do just like with moving the positions of the playlist you can move the positions of the individual songs at least i thought you could next is over here what this does is you could do like a range from the BPM. You could do by BPM or by key. I don't really use that setting, so I usually keep it off. And then next is edit. You can select the songs, and then you can either delete them, you can add them to a different playlist, or you can analyze the songs. So sometimes you won't see the information like the BPM and the key. So then you could select all these songs and then analyze it. That's a big question that I get. And that's how you do it. And then just down here, this is sessions. So let's say you were practicing DJing yesterday and you're like, oh, that was a really good set. Or you did a gig on a specific date and it went well. You could click on the date. And then you can you could export it as a CSV file, which is a like a document, like a spreadsheet, so you know what, what the songs that you did, so you can keep it in your files. Next is Q. These are just songs you set aside to play later. And now back to our playlist. We have the option to export as a CSV file. I made a specific video on this. This will make it into like a spreadsheet. So now you have a documentation on paper or on a file in your computer that you will know the playlist. So let's say that every Friday you DJ and you have a gig at the same place every Friday. You could get, print out these lists to make sure you know that you don't play the same songs every time. You could cross off stuff that didn't work. You could write notes on stuff that did work. It's just another way to stay organized and I definitely recommend you guys using that. All right, next we are going to do a playlist folder. So to, to do a playlist folder, what we can do is press the plus button, click on playlist folder. And now for this example, we are going to do um, 90s music. So this is gonna be our 90s music playlist folder. So now we're in our 90s music playlist folder. You'll see the folder down here and we can move it up to the top because it makes it easier. We got our example and then we got our 90s music playlist folder. I don't know why we lost. So now we're gonna add new playlist. So if we just did before with the example, we have the option to add songs, but now we're going to add a playlist. So this is going to be another playlist. So if you, it's gonna be a playlist inside the folder. So if you, if you wanted to even go deeper, you could add a playlist folder inside the playlist folder and then go on and on and on. But for this example, we'll keep it simple and just add a regular playlist. So now this playlist is going to be 90s, Pop music. Boom. The next one, click the plus button, and then we are going to add another playlist, and then this is going to be 90s 
hip hop. Add a playlist. Now we'll do the next one. For example, um, what else did they have? Um, we could do 90s country. So now let's say you're DJing a gig and someone goes, oh, you got any music from the 90s? You could easily go right here. No, that's go right here to the 90s. And now within this folder, you could choose it. If do they look like, do they seem like they want 90s country, hip hop, 90s pop music? And then you could select one of these and you could be playing the 90s pop music. And then let's say you could transition into the hip hop and so on and so and so forth. Now, one thing that you could do is, let's say we made this playlist, we could click over here and then go add all the playlists. So you could add all the songs from one playlist to another. So we could add all to playlist into the 90s. And for example, let's say that these were 90s hip hop songs. Now it's in there. So it stays in the playlist it was in. And then we go over here into our playlist folder into our playlist and here is all the music so it don't so don't think that because you made a playlist like it that's set in stone you could always add it all to another playlist and then make a different playlist like that i hope that makes sense all right so we did playlist and i showed you how to make playlist folders so you can keep going down i think it's a good idea to have all the, the decades so instead of just making a, a specific playlist for the gig which you should do after you make, um, it, in case you need backup or anything, you should already have these pre-made playlists. If you want to go by decades, you could go by decades. If you wanted to go by genres, you could go by genres, or so on and so forth. So now we have all we have our playlist and we have our playlist folder. We got the '90s, and then you could do a tooth, a playlist for, for the 2000s. So uh, this is 2000s music, pop and dance. And you could go keep going. You could do current. You could go to the 80s. And then you'll always have the music by the decades. When you're DJing for a crowd, it's usually if you play music for the music that their generation likes, you'll have a better reaction. So it's really it's a good idea to stay organized that way. Another, another tip that I personally use is I'll have a playlist for sound effects. So for scratching, um, for intros, for surprise party, See, I have this applaud. I play this after we have a surprise party and everyone's clapping. Another, and then you guys could find these tracks by going the title and searching sound effects. And then there's like millions of these sound effects and then you could just add it to your, add the playlist and then you could add it to your sound effects, effects playlist. So don't think of playlist that playlist just have to be music. You guys could use them for sound effects. You could put, could put your intros in them and you could put other stuff that you want in these playlists. Now the last thing I wanna cover is the smart playlist, my collection. So if we, if we click over here and then we do smart playlist, smart, example and then we could add songs so we could separate them by genre so we could do dance music and then it'll automatically find the parameters that you want so you could set BPM and it's going to is greater than 110 BPM. And it's gonna show you songs that are greater than 110 BPM. So it, it you just set the parameters and then it will tell you, it'll make a playlist specifically for you. I don't really use these smart playlists. I like to make my own custom playlist like I explained to you guys in the video. So if you got if this helped you guys, let me know in the comments if you guys want to learn more about the playlist in DJ Pro AI and you think I left something out, please let me know in the question. Also, any other questions you have about DJ Pro and DJing with the iPad, 
let me know. I try to get back to all the questions. And if you found value in this video, give it a like. And if you want to learn more about DJing on the iPad, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.